and welcome to worship. Before we begin, we have a few announcements and reminders. The first that is on Sunday, May 15th, the diaconate will be meeting at 11 o'clock in the ladies parlor. Also on Sunday, May 15th is the installation of Reverend James Koyama as pastor of the First Congregational Church of Montague. And that service will take place at two o'clock at the First Congregational Church of Montague and also available on Zoom. On Thursday, May 19th, the Executive Committee of the Franklin Association meets at 4.30 via Zoom. And on Saturday, May 21st, the cellar closet will be open from nine o'clock till 12 o'clock. And also a reminder that the cellar closet is still taking donations of gently used clothing and non-perishable food items. And if you are interested in either helping or making a donation, you can speak to either myself or Linda Robinson. This week, we wanna wish a very happy birthday to William Brown and Justin Arnott, both on May 20th. And now as we turn our minds and hearts to worship, let us consider these words. We are one in the spirit, we are one in the Lord. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. Come, let us praise God. Please join us now in the call to worship with the words in bold print. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Praise God, all angels. Praise God, all host. Everyone, praise the Lord. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise God, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let, Let everyone, everyone praise, praise the name, name of the Lord. For God commanded, and you were created. Let everyone praise the name of the Lord. For God's name alone is exalted. God's glory is above earth and heaven. Praise, praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. This week, we keep in our prayers Kent Lawson, Joyce Wilcox, and Ingrid Witten. Let us pray. Lord of love and light, 
shine into our lives and bring your love into our souls. Remind us of the amazing ways you have loved us, even when we turned our backs on you. Open our hearts to receive your loving spirit. Open our minds to receive your wisdom. Open our hands to show others your loving compassion. Lord of love and light, we hold in our hearts those around us who feel unloved. We bring them to you for you to shine your love into their lives. We hold in our minds those who are overwhelmed by their needs and difficulties. We hold in our hands your compassion to give them. Lord of love and light, there are people and places that are dark and in the dark about your love. So we ask that you shine forth your light and love in their lives and into those places. There are people and places that have closed their minds to you, to others, to new and fresh ideas. So shine forth your light and love to open their minds to you, to others, to new and fresh ideas. There are people and places that need our hand reaching out to them with your loving compassion. May our reaching out to them with your love and compassion shine forth your light and love. We pray these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of the Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where am I going? You cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. But this, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have one for one another. Here ends our reading. May God add to our understanding of it. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You probably know that sentence best as the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. While it's considered a basic command for Christians, the idea of treating others as you want to be treated isn't unique to the Christian church. In Buddhism, this thought is expressed, do not offend others as you would not want to be offended. In Islam, the prophet Muhammad is quoted, none of you are true believers until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. 
In Judaism, what is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. This is the whole Torah. All the rest is commentary. In Confucianism, Zhu Kang asked, is there one word which can serve as the guiding principle for conduct throughout life? Confucius said, it is the word, word altruism, shu. Do not do to others what you do not want them to do to you. In Sikhism, I am a stranger to no one, and no one is a stranger to me. Indeed, I am a friend to all. In Taoism, regard your neighbor's gain as your own gain, and your neighbor's loss as your own loss. And in Jainism, one should treat all creatures in the world as one would like to be treated. All of these religions and ways of living tell us the very thing that Christ told us. Love others as you love yourself. Now at the face of it, this doesn't seem too difficult. After all, loving others as I love myself means that I don't have to be perfect in how I treat others because I don't always treat myself perfectly. I feel justified being less than patient with others because I'm not always patient with myself. I can brush off my lack of kindness for others because I'm not always kind to myself. A few years ago, I saw a Valentine's card that said, I love you terribly on the front. When opened, it had the words, but I'll improve with practice. Perhaps most of us are not terrible at loving others, but I suspect that all of us could use some practice. It is not an easy task to be a loving person, especially when trying to live up to the call to love others as we love ourselves, because we are not always good at loving ourselves. And then in our passage today, Jesus gives us a new commandment. Jesus says in our passage this morning, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. So first, Jesus tells us to love one another. But then he tells us that we should love one another as Jesus loved us. That's a completely different story. To love one another as we live ourselves, love ourselves, gives us an out. It gives us an opportunity to brush off all of those times when we were less than loving because we're not always loving to ourselves. But to love others the way that Jesus loves us, that calls for perfect, constant love. Gilbert K. Chesterton said, to love means loving the unlovable. To forgive means pardoning the unpardonable. Faith means believing the unbelievable. Hope means hoping when everything seems hopeless. Now this ultimately is a definition of the kind of love to which Christ calls us in our passage this morning. The kind of love that pushes us to reach out beyond ourselves, beyond that circle of lovable people around us, and to reach into the circle of those we see or think of as unlovable, those people we don't like. Christ calls us to the kind of love that he showed on the night he was betrayed, the night when our scripture, place, the scripture lesson for today takes place. Christ calls us to the kind of love he modeled throughout his entire life. As we consider that, we must ask, how did Christ love? Well, he loved by welcoming and treating everyone with respect. From children to prostitutes, from tax collectors to adulterers, Christ welcomed everybody and treated everyone with dignity and respect and showed them love. 
Christ loved by teaching and explaining God's love and expectations. From the time he was a young child, Jesus went out of his way to teach others about God. He explained time after time what God's plan was and what was going to happen. He spent hours talking to the crowds that gathered, even when those same crowds interrupted his prayer or his sleep or his meals. Jesus showed his love by serving others. On the same night that our scripture passage for today occurs, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. This is the ultimate sign of love and service. Jesus showed his love by praying for others. Whether his prayers were made manifest through healing, or we are told that he took time alone to pray, we know that Jesus took time to pray for others. In fact, some of Jesus' last words were a prayer for others. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Jesus showed his love, his love by speaking the truth in love. Sometimes we start to think of love as being accepting of all kinds of actions and kind of turning a blind eye when someone acts inappropriately. Sometimes we start to think that to truly love someone means we must not question or oppose any of their actions. However, Jesus models for us that truly loving someone means to speak the truth to their actions. When Jesus met the woman who was about to be stoned to death for adultery, he doesn't condemn her behavior, but he also doesn't condone it. As he sends her on her way, he says, sin no more. When Jesus turns over the tables in the temple, He's sending out a loud message. Do not dishonor my father's house. And another message he was giving was, and do not take advantage of those less fortunate than you. By turning over those tables, Jesus was protecting the people who were being taken advantage of and scammed by the money changers. He spoke the truth and love into a situation that needed to be acknowledged and changed. Time after time, Jesus showed us how to love one another. So today I send us out to love one another, not as we would love ourselves, because we know that too often that is an imperfect love. But rather I send us out to, the, to love the world as Christ loved us. I send us out to serve one another, to pray for one another, to welcome and love everyone unconditionally, to teach and explain God's love to others, to speak the truth in love, especially in defense of the disadvantaged and oppressed. And as we go out into the world to love and to serve, I leave you with those words from G.K. Chesterton. To love means loving the unlovable, to forgive means pardoning the unpardonable. Faith means believing the unbelievable. Hope means hoping when everything seems hopeless. Let us pray. God of love, you gave us the model of perfect love through your son, Jesus. We ask that you help us to love others the way he loves us. Help us to serve one another, to teach one another, to love one another. Amen. I hope everybody has a great week. I hope to see you real soon. Take care. Bye-bye. My friends, Christ has given us a new commandment, that we love one another as Christ has loved us. By this, everyone will know that we are Christ's disciples if we share that love with the world. And through this love, all things will be made new. Go now and do as Christ commands. Amen.